I'm going to show you how to bend square tubing without a bending tool. It's going to be awesome. What you will need is a chop saw and a welder and a calculator that can do multiplication of pi. And yeah, and maybe some stuff to draw with. Please note, bending metal like this will likely reduce the strength of the metal versus just bending it with like a, a normal bender. But if you're doing something like I am where it's a non-load bearing gate frame or like a light load bearing gate support, you should be just fine. This is a technique that I developed after taking a course in high school called geometry. <laughs> and I even used this method back then to build stuff uh, with large bins in it, and it was square tubing. Uh, from here, I'm going to do a quick overview and then uh, end this video with some more precise and boring math for those who want to know the deets. Essentially, with uh, any bent piece of tubing uh, that is an even bend, uh, there's an outer and an inner uh, circumference that's created. And what you want to do beforehand is measure it out know the difference between the two circumferences and then make it so by cutting a portion of the inside of a uh, tubing uh, like to bend it. The portion that you cut out is a specific amount of length in total that is evenly distributed across several cuts and then uh, yeah the metal can just easily just bend into shape and you weld it up. Okay, before I go a little deeper here, let's do a quick preview of a tool that I bought at Home Depot, which is not a sponsor, nor is Ryobi. The Ryobi Blower. It's got what it takes to blow life back into the party. Do you hang out and have bonfires with friends and would like to light things up <laughs> to the next level? A Ryobi Blower is just what you need. Grass clippings by day and bonfires by night. This Ryobi Blower can bring the heat. Whoosh. So you saw me do a large bend. I also end up doing a smaller one. The, the smaller one was much easier to do the math for because the total diameter of the circle that could fit within the bend could also fit within like arm's length, uh, unlike the, the gate one, the big gate one. Uh, if you saw my welder review, uh, there's this little bit of me trying to fix my older welder. Yeah, and realizing that just buying a new one made more sense. Check out my welder review linked in the eye in the corner of the screen if you have not seen it yet and if you're curious and you want to maybe look into a low cost welder. It costs a little over 100 bucks. It's like 120, I think. Okay, so to the math. I'll show you how to do the math with a really big complex bend and also the smaller one as well. I ended up using a computer for the large bend because I needed to find the outer and inner diameter and circumferences of the, like an enormous circle. Do you need a computer? Not really, but if you have a very large bend like this one, you'll need, um, I don't know, to draw it and like draft it and protract and stuff on graphing paper and be precise. For the large bend, I took a picture of the fence where I wanted to put the gate and I'm able to scale portions of the image in Illustrator precisely measured in inches. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm not gonna go too deep into that part. After that, I drew a two inch frame over the image of what I wanted the gate to look like. And then I drew an enormous circle over the gate, uh, adjusting its size to give it like the bend that I wanted to see, you know, like the curve. Uh, when you draw like this, it's like a very rude style of computer assisted drafting or CAD. Uh, and in either way, uh, you get a, a wissy wig situation. What you see is what you get, wissy, wissy wig. If the gate frame looks like this on the computer, then it will look like this in real life. And in order for that to be true, you just can't mess up measurements or cuts uh, like anywhere. And also you can't make a mistake while you're drawing. After that, I measure the angle from uh, like each point where the bend portion met the square portion of the frame. You can see that I cut out a piece and that represents a 35.9 degree portion of the circle. Remember what you see is what you get. And I see a 35.9 degree piece of pie. Yum. All right, as I mentioned, uh, that's the uh, there's an inner and outer circumference to the bend, and I now I will draw some and talk to you about math. Just watch it through without stopping first, then go back. Uh, don't pause until I'm done showing you the math, uh, or you might get like stuck in a brain fart that just won't stop smelling. So just hold it watch it all the way through then go back and pause uh, accordingly seriously when you when the math comes together in the end and that like initial loop closes you may have an aha moment 
that you're depriving yourself of if you start pausing early on. So we have the piece of metal that we need to bend. It has the outer and the inner portion, okay? And we need to find some stuff out about those. So we have a circle on the outside and a circle on the inside. The, the larger one from here to here is 403 uh, inches. The inner one, because we take away two here and two here is minus four, so 399 from here to here. Now, to get the entire circumference of both of these, you times these by pi. And so I've done that uh, here. Of the smaller one, 1,253.49. All those numbers are inches. Sorry if you're not from America. Too bad. <laughs> Metric would be so much simpler. I don't know why we do this. Uh, and then of the uh, larger circle, we have 1,266.06. So those are the circumference of the outer and inner circle. That gives us the distance all the way around in inches. But what we need is only this piece right here. We need that length and that length, which this is a 35.9 degrees thing, so I'll show you how to do that. Take one of the circle's circumference, let's take that one, and know that that equals 360 degrees. Uh, and then we want to know what this number is of, we know the degrees but not what the number is. And so, if you take this, times that, equal it out on a calculator, and then divide it by that, you will get 125.00, uh, and some other numbers, but that's how many inches that this piece right here is. Okay, pretty cool. Math. All right, now, <laughs> and then we've got the 1,266, 360, 35.9, you cross multiply, then divide, and that gives you 126.25. So this is the outer length, 126.25. So we cut the piece of metal, that length, and the inner length is 125. So 125, you minus those out, and you get 1.25. Now, 1.25 inches, that is what you, the difference between this piece and this piece. So you have to evenly make cuts along this, and I actually had to draw the cut all the way to the wall, not through it, all the way to it. Whoa, dang it. And that is figured out by doing this, which is we have to, okay, so we have to cut that out, right? So, got your 1.25 inches you need to cut out. Uh, the width of my blade is what has to be considered here, and most chop saws are about an eighth of an inch, which in decimals is 0.125, which if you notice, those kind of match up and because it's 10. So 10 cuts will end up hogging out an eighth of an inch each time, which brings it to 1.25 inches, gone. Now, here's the piece of metal that we cut at 126.25, and we need to make the cuts. Um, so what you have to do is you have to add one extra cut. You take this, divide it by the number of cuts, in this case is 11, uh, and then that gives us one cut every 11.4772 inches. So a little under half of an inch. If you times that by 10, it'll give you 114.7, which should then leave you with this remaining. Uh, anyway, yeah. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There. <laughs> now every single space here is 11.47 inches. And after you've cut, uh, you make your cuts like this deep each time, not all the way through of course, but you make it up to the wall and then you can just bend it. And so that is how you do the math. And that's, I hope that was bearable. I hope you're not lost with the math. Uh, the timestamp on the screen is where you uh, can like scroll back and where the math starts. Uh, 
And uh, also I'll link it in the description. It'll say like, um, start over the math portion or something. Yep. Well, that's all it takes. I hope that helped. See you later, internet. Are you, are you still there? Okay, okay, I've got some jokes. <laughs> you haven't killed the video, so I've got some jokes. What, did, what is the thermometer's favorite part of a pie chart? The various amounts of degrees. Because the thermometer? Yeah. Oh, I got another one. What is the thermometer's favorite uh, part of college? It could choose from many degrees. <laughs> this is really bad.